Hi viewers, you are welcome again to my YouTube channel. My name is Farmer Tanto. I'm a grassroots environmental activist. I'm a farmer. So today I'm here in Yaounde, you know, to visit a friend who is about to set up his farm. Man, I just want to see what he wants to do at the farm. And then from there, he's going to share his vision, his experiences. And then from there, we'll see how we share his stories into the world. Thank you for always coming back to my channel. Remember, agriculture is the future of Africa. And it is time for us to share our own stories and to change the narrative on how we see agriculture in Africa. Hello viewers. It's an amazing opportunity to be here in Yaounde to visit one of my elder brothers. Who, is, who wants to change the narrative of agriculture, not only in Cameroon, but in Africa. Man, good to see you, sir. Yeah, thank you, you're welcome. <laughs> wow, I'm so honored, you know. When you gave me a call on the phone, I decided that I was going to come and see what, what, what you're about to set up. So what is your name and where are you, where are you coming from? Uh, I'm Mr. Cheli Nidov Ndongyam. Okay. I'm uh, from the Northwest region, specifically from Santa. Okay. Santa, you know, Santa has so many other villages, 13 villages that make up Santa subdivision. That's right. So I'm from Bay, Santa Bay. Okay. Yes. Wow. But I'm based in Yaounde. Okay. Yeah, you know, when you told me you are setting up a farm, and since my passion is to encourage people, you know, to get into agriculture, I said, let me come so that we can put ideas together to see how, what can be done, you know, to scale up this farm. So actually, what inspired you to go into agriculture? Uh, the inspiration is very natural. Uh, let me talk a bit uh, first about my background before I come to that. Okay. You know, uh, I'm a graduate from uh, the Advanced Teachers Training College. Okay. After graduation, I taught for about some few years. After that, I had this boiling urge. You know, when you have an entrepreneurial mindset, mm -hmm. the vision always in you to push it ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, I dropped teaching. Not really dropping because you know, when you are an entrepreneur, you spend the whole of your life teaching. That's you right. have to train people. Mm -hmm. I now went into public contracts to fill the public contracts. Okay. That I've been in a public contracts for more than 20 years. I'm a CEO of a Medoff Group. Wow. Yeah, group. Wow. When uh, you look at Medoff Group, we have done a lot, a lot, in as much as rehabilitation works with the government, concern, construction work, road security, and uh, so many other things. Okay. After doing all of that, we went into real estate because I'm equally the CEO of Medov Real Estate Company. Okay. Uh, with uh, so many houses to uh, rent. Wow. Yes, yeah, so, so we are expanding, we're expanding. Wow. And uh, with an entrepreneur's mindset, the boiling urge, we thought of farming, going into farming. So the wow. name of this farm is uh, Medor Farm. Medor Farm? Yes. Wow. So I'm now coming into the question of what inspired me into farming. That's right. Uh, my father, my parents have never been civil servants. Okay. So I was actually brought up by my parents from a typical peasant farming background. That's right. Yeah. And I will tell you another amazing thing. My father has 20 children. Yeah. Almost all well educated. And uh, the source of their education all from farming. Wow. And uh, I begin to, that, what, that was what inspired me that if, with this number of children, if, if my father was doing farming at the level at which he was doing and was able to take care of us, yeah. then it means there is something in the farming, something beyond what people see. Wow. And uh, 
He was a uh, celery farmer, cabbage farming, carrots, Irish potato. In short, you know Santa very well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know that Santa is a place that God blessed it with all of those things. Yeah. And uh, after looking at his activities, after growing in all of what he was doing, and uh, being uh, a very successful uh, farmer. Today, when you visit him, you see that uh, he does a lot of piggery farming, poultry farming. He continues into it. Yeah. And uh, being what I had admired so much from childhood, it will not be any surprising thing to you to see that uh, after doing all the businesses that people will say they are big time kind of businesses that yeah. they yield so much big income and so on. Mm -hmm. I've decided to go back to it. Wow. Yeah, to go back to it. You know, going back to your roots is always something very um very, very admiring, very, very fulfilling. Wow. And I think that uh, with all of what I have done already up to this up to my age this is one of the most fulfilling part of it that I want to, that I'm venturing into now. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> this Thank is you. unbelievable. Like when I see the pigry that you have just installed, so what is going to be the capacity of this pigry? Uh, the capacity of the pigry will be very wide. But from the beginning, with what we've just seen, Yeah. It will have a capacity of at least 500 pigs. Wow. But our vision is that in the next three years, four years, we should be able to produce 2,000 pigs. Wow. 2,000 pigs uh, about twice a year. That's twice right. a year. Wow. Yes. So, what is the surface area of this land and how do you acquire this land? Uh, you know, when you are an entrepreneur, with an entrepreneurial mindset at every moment you think of what to do that can go a long way to solve some immediate problems around you that's right with the other businesses that i've been doing you see you discover that, that we need to <clears throat> We need some experts. We need civil engineers. Mm -hmm. We need uh, some people with some very high profile, mm -hmm. high academic background. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, once in a while, you look at so many other people that don't have that academic profile. Yeah. And you begin to ask, how can these people be useful to the community? Mm -hmm. It actually drove me to start thinking of how to acquire land, mm -hmm. land in Yaoundé. Yeah. That is not too far from my residence. Yeah. Because when this land is available, start doing farming, it will help recruit some of these young people. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Who have not really attained a certain level in their academic background. Mm -hmm. And that will go a long way to help them and equally help the government. Wow. wow. So, this land, for the moment we intend expanding, is above seven hectares. Wow. Seven hectares. Wow. And uh, it has a land title already. Okay. It has a land title because you know to do investment somewhere, you must be very sure of the fixed asset. That's right. Yes, because right. if you interview me, you come and say, you say this is your land, and I don't have any paper to show to you, I don't think it's, uh, it will encourage you to come and invest. That's right. Yes, yeah, so with the land title, I'm sure it gives a guarantee that this is, this actually belongs to us, belongs to Medo Farm, and that a business can start, we would have long started before now, but uh, you know, paperwork and so on, for things to be settled mm -hmm. before you get into the business proper. Uh, since this place is not too far from me and I have some other lands 
along the highway mm -hmm. that I was thinking of doing some other businesses there. The same people who proposed those other lands to me were the people that when I had this idea, I went to them and asked, can I now have a place to do farming? Yeah. That when I do farming, I can easily come and sell the produce where I've just bought. They say, oh, the idea is very welcome. And that if you do it, we'll show you a place that you do it so that the village population, the local population, will be for the benefit. That's right. And they now directed me to where we are today. Wow. Wow. So now, what are the activities that you envisage to carry out in these seven hectares besides, you know, the pea grid? No, I see. Yeah, beside the pre you know, uh, I always like to diversify in any of my business that I do. As an entrepreneur, you always discover that I diversify within the business. That's right. Today we are talking of this pre If you just go below there, you see we'll be we'll be reading fish. Mm -hmm. uh, there will be more than about 15 pounds down there for fish, wow. fish really. Mm -hmm. We are going to go into poultry farming. We will rear goats. There will be some cows. Wow. We will cultivate maize. You saw plantains. Yeah. You saw popo. Yeah. You saw cassava. Yeah. So we a blend of so many activities. Wow. Yeah. So besides all of this, do you face any challenges? Uh, the challenges for the moment are there, but if you want to do any venture and you have in mind that uh, you will not face any challenges, then we'll never do anything. You must face the challenges and you know, as is often said, that uh, we should always take our challenges to be opportunities to me, I believe that every challenge that comes to me mm -hmm. is an opportunity and we just keep going. That's right. Yeah, you know, you, you have challenges from, you know, having the right personnel at times uh, is a bit difficult, but we keep on working towards that. At times having the necessary financing to do it is, yeah. is equally uh, a major issue. Yeah. But, we say we should start from somewhere and begin to push on that uh, we're very confident that with time, as we are growing the financial issue might be solved, oh, the government might come in, or some other partners might That's come right. in. Because what we are doing is not only for the health yeah. of Medop Group, it's for the health of, of our country, for the health of the human society. Yeah that I think is an initiative that needs to be encouraged. You know, what surprises me about your movement, you are an entrepreneur into real estate. And now, because you grew up in, from a farming background, I remember I visited your father, you know, and he's so energetic. I was amazed to see his poultry farm. And when he told me about you and, you know, <coughs> the connection, I said, I must come and see what you're doing. What baffled me is that you, you are now coming back into agriculture from the entrepreneurs, real estate. But now, a lot of young people, they think that farming is for dirty people, for poor people. If you could have one message to young people to change their mindset about going back into the soil, what would that message be? Maybe you can just look at the camera and... Uh, those who think that farming is a very dirty kind of business, I want to advise them to change their mindset. To know that the billions that we go up and down looking for are in the soil. The billions are in the soil. For those who know me very well and know the kind of business that I've been doing, and if they see me going into farming, they should know that that is the way to go. Because I'm not saying this to pride myself. When we talk of Santa subdivision, we even talk about the Northwest, when they want to come, some entrepreneurs that have made their mark, I think my name will not be a strange name in that milieu. But 
when you see me taking this adventure of farming, it's a call for all the youth that instead of risking their lives moving up and down, dying in the Mediterranean Sea, that they're going to look for greener pastures. The pastures are right on our doorsteps. And I'm ready to always assist them with my mother's ideas and to tell them more about my story so that they can be inspired by this and we push our society to move forward. When some people look at me today, it's good to say when I met my father, some would think that I was born from a different kind of background, but a typical peasant background that I moved barefooted in the village. I remember I wore my first leather shoe when I was going to Form 1, so you can imagine. Wow. Yeah, like it. Wow. So I'm so happy, I'm so honored that I've come here. This is not the first time that I'm, that I'm, that I'm, that I'm, that I'm going to be here. I think I will always come here more than, even more than 20 times to make sure that the world should follow up what you are doing. And this is going to be an amazing exposure. You know, there are so many young people out there in the West who are stranded, who are frustrated, who are stressed up, who are tired of the Western lifestyle. I want to let them know that Africa is the center of attraction to the whole world. And we believe that the Mendor Farm want to be a destination for international communities where volunteers will come from all over the world to come and, and get connected to nature. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah, I feel so you. honored. You know. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be waiting for you to come. <laughs> exactly. And multiply your visits. Wow, thank you. Your visit is a booster to us. That's right. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>